Let's start for heaven's sake. <laughs> the Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> When you stay at a hotel and leave word to be called in the morning, and the operator says, uh, 7.30, time to get up. Well, 10 to 1, you just yawn and feel sort of grumpy. But if that operator said, 7.30, time for a delicious grape nuts breakfast, well, I bet you'd jump out of bed with a grin. Yes, sir, crisp, crunchy grape nuts or toasty brown grape nuts flakes make a mighty cheerful start for any morning. For both grape nuts and grape nuts flakes have a malty rich sweet as a nut flavor that sure hits the old spot. And both bring you important whole grain nourishment. Iron, niacin, vitamin B1, plus protein. The kind of nourishment nutrition experts say you need as a part of your adequate breakfast every day. So eat a good breakfast, do a better job. And for good cheer and good nourishment, feature malty rich grape nuts or grape nuts flakes to swell breakfast treat. Gentlemen, Jack Benny's troop has been away for five weeks during service camps throughout the Pacific Northwest. Jack arrived home late last night and went straight to bed. It's now morning and Rochester is entering his bedroom to awaken him. Come on, come on, Bertie. You'll have to get off of Mr. Benny's head. I gotta wake him up now. <laughs> Wait a minute, Bertie, take your worm with you. <laughs> it's nine o'clock, boss. Boss, it's nine o'clock. I better not stand in front of him. He'll open his eyes, look at me, think it's dark, and go back to sleep again. <laughs> Man, when he gets into the arms of Morpheus, old Mort sure holds on. Uh-oh, he's dreaming he's playing the violin again. How can a man torture himself like that? No use, I gotta get him up. Guess I'll have to resort to the old standby. Huh? Huh? Where, what? Who? Who's, who? Huh? It's just me, boss. I had to do that to wake you up. Oh. No, oh. You know, Rochester, when I get in the arms of Morpheus, old Morph sure holds on. <laughs> Say, I'm pretty sharp this morning, eh? Hey, eh, Rod? Yeah. You not only talk in your sleep, you hear in it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, nothing. Say, it's after 9 o'clock and your gang will be here pretty soon for rehearsal. Yeah, stand back, Rochester. I want to do my exercises. One, two, three, four. Bend down and touch the floor. One, two, three, four. Up again and down some more. One, two, three. Rochester, pick up my toupee. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Did you pick up my toupee? One, two, three, four. Caught it before it hit the floor. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Tomorrow I'll do a little more. One. Gee, boss, you're doing your exercise much better these days. You touch the floor every time you bend. Yeah. Now help me up off my knees. <laughs> Thanks. Now, Rochester, I'll take my shower and you go down and make breakfast, will you? Uh, 
Ah, that's what I call a swell breakfast, Rochester. I know, Mr. Benny, and I admire your loyalty to your sponsor, but don't you think that sometimes you go a little too far? What do you mean? Well, after all, boy, soft-boiled grape nuts. <laughs> Rochester, they're good any way you fix them. They're toasty brown, they're malty rich, they're sweet as a nut, they're a whole grain cereal, and they're a basic seven food. And they're all... Boy, sweet. stop reading off the box and talk to me. <laughs> Rochester, I'm merely trying to show you that you need a whole grain cereal every day, and you should eat them. Oh, boss, I do! I do! <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad. <laughs> glad because, uh... Now I'll answer the door, Rochester. You straighten up the kitchen. Uh, if you wish, I'll answer the door and you can... Never mind. <laughs> we'll do it my way, today. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Hiya, Jackson. Well, Phil, hey, rehearsal isn't for an hour yet. What are you doing here so early? Well, I just couldn't wait. I had to tell you. Tell me what. Well, you remember when we were in Victoria, Canada, and all the newspapers printed stories that me and Alice had another baby? Yeah, what about it? Well, it's true, it's true. <laughs> I know, I know. Come on in the house. And say, Jackson, my new baby is the cutest thing you ever laid eyes on. Yeah? Does she look like you, Phil? Yeah. Guys, she's beautiful. <laughs> well, I can understand that, Phil. After all, you're such an Adonis. Ain't I, though? Hmm. But you know what surprises me most of all, Jackson? What? Little babies are so young. Yeah, especially the young ones. <laughs> and my kid is so tiny. Of course, all babies are tiny when they're first born. How about Don Wilson? Look, Phil, Wilson wasn't born. He was assembled at Lockheed. <laughs> Speaking of the flying fortress, here he comes in for a landing. Wilson is the only guy I know that comes in on the beam and brings the beam with him. <laughs> hello, Don. Oh, hello, Jack. Am I in time for rehearsal? Oh, sure. Mary isn't here yet. Say, fellas, while we're waiting, uh, would you like a cup of coffee? Yeah, I don't mind. Well, oh, thanks, Jack. I'll have a cup. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss? Oh, Rochester, coffee for Mr. Wilson and Mr. Harris. Okay. Sugar and cream, gentlemen? Yes, yes thank, thank you. you. Uh, sit right down here, fellas. Would you like some toast with your coffee? No, no thanks. thanks. Uh, wheat rolls or donuts? No, no thanks. thanks. <laughs> oh, Rochester, turn on the radio. Would you like some music, fellas? No, oh, it doesn't make any difference. Oh, yes, it does. With music, there's a 30% entertainment tax. <laughs> Rochester, that's not my fault. It's a government regulation. Now, turn on the radio and let's have some music. And as our Melody Express rambles southward and approaches New Orleans, our quartet, High, Low, Jack, and Shapiro... <laughs> We'll entertain you with... Way down yonder in New Orleans, in the land of dreamy seas, there's a garden of Eden, that's what I mean. Creole babies with flashing eyes, softly whisper with tender sighs, stop. Oh, won't you give your lady fair a little smile? Stop! You bet your life you'll linger there when you hear the band from Dixie. Way down yonder. Oh, well, look at the way, way, way down yonder. Way down yonder in the Hey, fellas, that's a pretty good quartet. Yeah, I wonder what program that is. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when you wake up in the morning, do you feel tired, worn out, dull, listless, and logy? You do? Well, don't expect any sympathy from me. I'm a louse. <laughs> but you can get sympathy from my sponsor, the makers of Sympathy Soothing Syrup. Remember, folks, sympathy spelled backwards 
is your tapapus. <laughs> So, folks, if you can't remember sympathy, just think of Yatapamus. <laughs> Y-H-T-A-P-M-Y-S. Yip, yip, Yatapamus, yip, yip, Yatapamus, yip, yip, Yatapamus, hide your blues away. Turn, uh, turn off the radio, Rochester. Yatapamus. I'll have to try some of that. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, fellas. Hi, oh, Mary. How are you? Mary, how'd you get in the house? The door was open. Am I late for rehearsal? No, we've got plenty of time. I overslept. Rochester, get Miss Livingston a cup of coffee. Yes, sir. No cream, no sugar, no radio. <laughs> okay, okay. Say, Mary, how do you feel after our long trip? Oh, fine, Don. And say, fellas, I must tell you something. I had the wildest dream last night. <laughs> <laughs> what was it, Mary? Well, I dreamt we were all flying back from Seattle and Jack was the pilot. Me? Yeah. Uh -huh. And right in the middle of the trip, when we were 15,000 feet in the air, you stopped the plane, turned to me and said, Mary, either kiss me or get out and walk. Really? <laughs> yeah. And if it wasn't a dream, I'd have broken my neck. <laughs> <laughs> Me, a pilot, trying to force you to kiss me. And that's not all. When I stepped out of the plane, I kept falling, falling, and falling. And just as I was about to hit the ground, another plane came along, and I dropped right into it. Gee. And guess who the pilot was? Who? You again. <laughs> me? So I jumped out and fell right into a wagon load of fish. Hey. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> you look so funny lying there with your mouth wide open. <laughs> are making up the whole thing. I am not. Come on, Jackson, let's get started with our rehearsal. We're going to be late for the broadcast. Okay, wait till I get the script. Oh, say, Jack, before we start, I want to call home. My trunk is supposed to arrive today, and I forgot to tell Butterfly about it. Okay. Operator. Oh, operator, get me Crestview 6, 7071. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> what? You heard me. Now, look here, operator, will you please... Oh, oh, I forgot, Mary. Mary, give me the phone. Hello, operator. Yes? This is J.B., OK, one local. <laughs> uh, put it, uh, put it through. Yes, Mr. Betty, and welcome home. Thank you, thank you. Here you are, Mary. She's getting your number. OK. Hello, Jerome. Uh, Butterfly, this is Miss Livingston. Oh, I'm sorry. I was hoping it was my boyfriend, Jerome. You know, the soldier. Yes, I know. Now, Butterfly, a man's going to deliver my trunk, and I want you to pay for it because I had it sent C-O-D. How do you pronounce that name? <laughs> Butterfly, C-O-D is not a name. It means cash on delivery. Like O-P-A means Office of Price Administration. And F-B-I means Federal Bureau of Investigation. My goodness. You have to go through all that just to get a trunk? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Butterfly. I was just giving an example of what certain groups of letters mean. Well, Miss Livingston, the only letters I know are A-W-O-L. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You know what A-W-O-L means. Yes, ma'am. Well, what does it mean? Jerome is in town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, Butterfly, let's forget about Jerome for a minute. I guess I'll have to forget about him. He came in town last week and went out with another girl. Oh, that's too bad. I wouldn't mind if she was half as pretty as I am. Oh. But I'm not half as pretty as she is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't worry, Butterfly. Jerome will come back to you. Do you really think so? Well, certainly. Maybe Jerome isn't himself right now. You see, Butterfly, everybody has two sides, the good side and the bad side. And once in a while, the good side weakens a little and the bad side predominates. Do you know what I mean? I think I do, Miss Livingston. When Jerome brings me a box of candy, it's his good side that brings me. <laughs> That's right. But before I even get a chance to taste it, his bad side predominates the whole box. <laughs> <laughs> well, you 
see, Butterfly, Jerome has two sides. Yes, half wolf and half pig. <laughs> <laughs> well, something like that. Now, goodbye, Butterfly. Don't forget to pay for the trunk. I won't. Goodbye, Miss Livingston. Well, you know how to handle her. I certainly got a hand it to you, Mary, giving Butterfly all that hooey about the good side and the bad side. Well, that's not hooey, Jack. Mary's right, Jack. Everybody has two sides. Don, you've got four sides, but that doesn't prove anything. <laughs> two sides. Well, now, this is just what I mean, Jack. You know, everybody has a split personality. It's called uh, schizophrenia. Schizophrenia? Yes, it's... Is this uh, like your tapamus or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, schizophrenia, it's, it's... Well, it's that little man inside of all of us that subconsciously governs everything we do. So you see, Jack, everybody is really two persons. Oh, I don't believe that stuff. He's right, Jackson. Even you have a dull personality. <laughs> That's duo, duo. <laughs> Maybe you believe in that, Phil, but not me. Well, certainly I believe in it. I got two sides to me, too. Oh, fine. There's one side to me that everybody knows. Harris, the show-off, the guy that loves himself, the guy that always wants to be in the limelight. That side I know. Now, what's... What's, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what's the other side? Harris, the genius. <laughs> <laughs> Fine genius. You're the only guy I know who sent flowers to Flat Top's <laughs> funeral. <laughs> Besides one girl in the Times. <laughs> now let's cut out this silly talk about people having two sides and get started with our rehearsal. Jack, it's not silly talk. Even you have two sides. Oh, what do you mean? Well, generally, you're a nice fellow. But on the other hand, look at the way you treat Rochester. I never saw anybody get so much out of a butler for so little. Mary, are you suggesting that I overwork Rochester and underpay him? That's what she said. That's what the lady said. She said that. <laughs> Rochester, this doesn't concern you. Now, come on, kid. Let's cut out all this gab about two sides and get started with a rehearsal. First thing you know, we'll be late for the... Come in. Yes? Remember me? <laughs> I'm Herman Peabody, the insurance salesman. Oh, hello, Herman! Hello. Well, Herman, we just started to rehearse our program for this afternoon. We're awfully busy, so better you, maybe you better come back some other time. Huh? All right. Don't need any insurance, do you? <laughs> Not right now. We'll, we'll talk about it the next time you come around. All right. Now, fellas... At the start of the program, right after Don introduces me... You know, you have a lot of funny experiences in the insurance business. Uh, I don't doubt it, Herman. I don't doubt it. But, but right now... Last week, a man wanted oh. some life insurance, and by mistake, I sent him an automobile policy. Well, then, instead of being here, Herman, why aren't you out rectifying the mistake? It's too late. The man died. <laughs> That's a fine how do you do. How do you do? <laughs> Look, I'm, I don't mean that. Look, I'm... <laughs> Herman, I'm thinking of the man's wife. Now, her husband wanted some life insurance. You gave him a policy for an automobile. The company wouldn't pay off on a thing like that. Oh, they wouldn't at first, but I fixed it. What do you mean? I told the company he died of a rusty transmission. <laughs> you mean to say the company paid off? More than that. They offered to send his wife a new body, but she wouldn't take it. <laughs> oh, well, look, Herman, I told you I'm busy right now. Look, we got to rehearse, so come back some other time, will you? All right. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Come here, Herman. I want to ask you something. Yeah? Uh, you're a mild-mannered man, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, every day you do exactly the same things, don't you? Uh-huh. I mean, you never lose your temper, do you, Herman? Oh, no. There you are, Mary, and you too, Don. Your whole theory of dual personalities exploded. You can go now, Herman. Would you like to hear about my other side? <laughs> what? 
There's another side of me that's a mean, conniving, bloodthirsty monster. <laughs> bloodthirsty monster? Did you ever hear of Dracula? Yes. Kid stuff. <laughs> Now look, Herman, 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 you can go now. We have work to do. Okay, I'm going outside and frighten people. Boo! Don. Don, pick him up and let's go on with the rehearsal. All this silly business about two sides. Say, Jackson, it's getting pretty late. Maybe we ought to go over to the studio. Okay, let's do that. Come on, Mary, I'll drive you over. Silly talk about split personalities and two sides. It's ridiculous. All right, Jack. If you don't believe it, forget about it. Let's get the studio. Hmm. Two sides. Jack! Jack, I'll fold your arms and put it back on the wheel. Don't worry. My, my other side is driving. My other side is driving. He's careful, too, you know. Oh, uh, don't be so sarcastic. Well, what are you stopping here for? I'm going into the cigar store. I'll be right out. Hmm. Split personality, little man inside you. What bunk. Well, sir, what can I do for you? Uh, I'd like a cigar, please. Yes, sir, what kind? Oh, I don't know. I see you haven't got the kind I smoke. I just want something mild. Well, here's a nice mild cigar for a quarter. A quarter, eh? <laughs> and here's one a little stronger for 10 cents. I see. Well, gee, I don't know which one to get. This one's a quarter, and that one's ten cents, eh? Yes, sir. Well, I don't know. I like the looks of that quarter one, and yet... You know which cigar you're going to take, Jack Debbie. What? You're going to take the ten cents. You always take the ten cent. Yes, but the, the quarter cigar is milder, and it's, it's much better for my throat. A lot you care about your throat. <laughs> Come on, take the ten cent one, and let's get going. No, no, I won't take it. I want the quarter one, do you hear? I want that quarter cigar. I know. Cigar. But remember, Jack Benny, if you buy the one for a dime, you save 15 cents. 15 cents, 15 cents, 15 cents, 15 cents, and that ain't hay. 15 cents, and that ain't hay. 15 cents. Stop it! Stop it! I don't care about the money. I don't care what I say. I want the mild one. Hey, mister, give me that quarter cigar. Yes, sir. Jack, Jackie boy, reflect a little. That cigar costs a quarter, two dimes and a nickel, 25 pennies. Think, man, think. Okay, hold it, hold it, clerk, hold it, please. Make up your mind, will you? Which cigar do you want? Take it easy, I'm in conference. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I want the quarter one, and yet... You know what you're going to do, Jack Benny. You never smoked a quarter cigar in your life, did you? Did you? Yes, yes, I did. Not a new one. <laughs> about that time Phil Harris threw a birthday party for me. I smoked three of them right in a row. Phil gave you those 
cigar. He did not! He did, too. You're a miser, you're a miser, you're a miser, you're a miser. Promo seltzer, promo seltzer, promo seltzer, promo seltzer. Stop! 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 You get your tap a miss, you get your tap a miss, you get your tap a miss, prize your blues away! Get away from me! Get away from me! If you don't, I'll go crazy. Will you please decide which cigar you want? There's another customer waiting. Yes, I'd like to buy a pipe, please. Well, I only have two kinds. Here's one that sells for $8, and this one's $15. I'll take the $15 pipe. Here you are. Thank you very much. And now what about you, sporty? <laughs> What? Have you made up your mind yet? You know, I close at midnight. Well, look. <laughs> Clerk, give me, give me just another minute. I'll decide. 25 or 10 cents, 25 or 10 cents, 25 or 10 cents, 25 or 10 cents. Those voices, stop! Stop, I'll go mad, I tell you. Mad, mad! Do you hear me? Mad! He's not as good as Paul Lucas, not as good as Paul Lucas, not as good as Paul Lucas, not as good as Paul Lucas. How does that get in there? <laughs> Say, Clerk. Clerk, I made up my mind. Give me that quarter cigar. No, Jack. You want the ten cent one. The quarter one. The ten cent one. The quarter one. The ten cent one. All right. All right. Give me the ten cent one. I'll take it. I'll take it. I knew this would happen to me. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Hey, you know, Mary? Why? I was just thinking. You know, there might be something to that split personality thing after all. Maybe there is such a thing as a person having two sides. Oh, you believe it now, eh? What happened in the cigar store? Oh, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Mr. Wilson, do you by chance solve mysteries? Mysteries? Well, uh, Herman, I, I might. What is it? Well, it's my wife. She won't talk to me in the morning. In the morning, you say? Yeah, at breakfast, she just sits... At breakfast, you say? Yeah, she just sits... Why, and... Herman, you should cheer her up with grape nuts. Oh, did you say crispy, crunchy, molly rich grape nuts? Yes, I mean, no, no, I, I was going to. And delicious grape nuts bring you all around whole grain... Grape nuts bring you whole grain nourishment, the kind you need every day. Iron, niacin, extra vitamin B1. Did you say that? Well, I was just coming to that. Grape nuts make a grand basic breakfast dish, and everybody should and eat... everybody should eat a good breakfast, do a better job. Did you say that? Well, I was going to say it, Herman. And grape nuts are a swell thrifty... They're a thrifty buy in a big little 12-ounce package... Now, listen, Herman, I want you to solve a mystery for me. If you know all about delicious, malty rich grape nuts, why don't you see that your wife eats them for breakfast? Why, she does, Mr. Wilson. That's just the trouble. She's so busy enjoying her grape nuts, she won't talk to me. Oh, I see. Well, Herman, there's no mystery about that. Goodbye, now. Well, folks, this concludes another half hour, and we'll be with you next Sunday night at the same time. Say, Mary, what would you think of the show? Pretty good. I wish my mother had heard it. Why, doesn't she listen to our program? Yeah, but she always tunes out early. How early? About November. <laughs> oh, well, then maybe she missed it. I know. Good night, folks. <laughs>